G2 on the CT side are going to be trying to make any plays against them. Now we're, we've got 50 seconds left on the clock in the round, and so it seems like NIP have made up their minds. They want to go into the A site, and they're just going to try and run and gun their way there. And this is going to be perfect. There's only two people right now on the bomb side. Unfortunately, one of them is Shocks, and he's such a god with the pistol. It's not going to be easy. Smith's opening up a little bit of damage, and now it's all on Shocks in the background. They're trying to run him down, and look at him trying to trade up the angle there, but it's just not working out at all. Scream and RPK takes two in return, and the bomb is going to be planted. Get right, though. He's trapped in that corner, and Scream looking for some of those headshots. It's a three-on-three -three with the bomb down, and now G2 has to get in there and defuse it. They don't have a whole lot of time to work with here. So Forrest crouching on the angle. Missed opportunity there for Scream. Could have picked off Forrest for free. And now Forrest manages to get the first kill. And so it's a man advantage now for NIP going into the hold. Body and RPK rushing onto the site. And Body's going to find the first one back. Get right is going to get overwhelmed. And Body just doing work right now. He's got the man advantage. And he's just going to press onto the site. All three kills for Body. Do they have the time? Yes, they do. RPK has the kit. And the bomb will be defused. Go. Well, if you are a newcomer to the game, then we want to introduce you to a couple of tools here that will help you spectate the game. First off, as we mentioned, that top left-hand corner, you have the mini-map, which is a top-down view of the map that we're currently playing on, and you can see every position of every player. Now, this is not something the players can see, otherwise it'd be a bit weird. They'd know the other setup. We also have the X-ray feature, so I'm going to just uh, toggle off and on here, and you can see players through walls with this. I'll show you um, when it's on, oh, sorry, when it's off and when it's on, right? And that'll help you see where the enemy is on. Also, a scoreboard that tracks kills, assists, deaths, and also the amount of money, and that's the crucial part here. More money means bigger rifles, so that's all you need to know to watch a bit of Counter-Strike. Exactly, and this is an economic game, basically. You know, this, the headshots, they're flashy, obviously you need to get the kills, but you also need to have the money to buy the guns to get the job done with. 1-0 lead here for G2, and well, G2, they have upgraded to the rifles, to the SMGs, and IP still sitting on the pistols, but Shoxy taking a bit of damage here. Yeah, and a bit of a good trade, I mean, right now, especially as Freiburg actually stealing that M4, and um, not too bad. Right now, they're just trading weapons, and as we were just explaining, G2, because they have better rifles right now, it shouldn't be an even trade. NIMP are performing a bit better than maybe their uh, pistols would allow them to normally. The big thing here is Shox is right now moving up right next to Python. He's going to be able to spot them early on. He's not got a lot of health, but just the fact that he can hear them and maybe even sneak a kill in as they come through, this is a very advanced position on the map if you're on the CT side, and they won't be expecting it. Yeah, he's looking for a point of contact here. Exist might get caught off guard. He's going to be setting up for that nade to go out onto the site, and Shoxy's hearing the footsteps right now. Exist is going to go running right in. Surprise, surprise, Shoxy's there, and they trade one for one. But Shoxy now just got confirmation of where that bomb was playing from. And so it's up to NIP. Do they want to get tricky? They have 30 seconds left to get onto a bomb site and get that bomb planted, which is not a whole lot of time to move with. And you can see G2 on the CT side, they're kind of dancing in the middle of the map right now. They're not really sure which way to go. They have, they've lost track of the bomb. And so they're trying to figure out where NIP are coming from. And they get caught out in the middle of the map. Scream somehow survives. Yeah, but even worse, if Pyth had gone down then, that would have been the bomb as well. And they wouldn't have time to plan. Look at G2 charging in. A bomb down as well. And RPK going to clean it up. A double kill for him at the end there. And a very good move from G2. I like the fact that they were staying as a little unit there instead of spreading themselves out across the map. That was the second round going in favor of G2, but overall, that's not exactly a great round here. NIP are going to have AKs around early because of that bomb plan. And again, in Counter-Strike, if you put the bomb down as a terrorist and you lose the round, you still get an $800 bonus for everyone on the team, and that's a really big factor, and it's what it's allowed them to buy these rifles here in the third round. So G2, I mean, look at what they've got here, Semler. It's, uh, it's really not that much. I'm a bit surprised, to be frank. I mean, they're, they're really skimping on the firepower. RBK is going to try to make something happen. He gets one kill, but get right there to rip Smith's head off, and it's just going to be that two-man advantage now for NIP moving on to the B site. There is a man close by lurking, and that's going to be Shoxy. And he can be the linchpin, make everything happen. There's the worst first kill on to get right. He doesn't know that Freiburg is going for the flank, but he just makes it back into CT. Well, they basically back off together. I thought that Freiburg would try and get the trade kill there. Revenge, yeah. get the revenge kill on Get Right, but it doesn't happen. I think if he had had maybe a bit more healthy, he's at 22 right now, so maybe he wasn't feeling quite confident. Instead, look at Body opening up on Python. Now the rest of this push is not going to be working all that well. Body coming back around the corner, and Shox has also shown up, and they have so much more health than NIP do right now. Easy kill coming through. Now it's all on Forrest, and this is what we call a clutch situation. One on two, and he's not going to get it either. It will be Body instead picking up a double kill. Shox with the double kill. And that's going to be G2 winning a third round after a horrendous start. That wasn't a good start to the round for them.
And this is a very important detail. Shox, Scream, RPK, they're getting a lot of attention right now for G2, but Body has just really come through for the team since he's been picked up. He's the young blood. He came in from like the semi-pro scene. I mean, still pro, but not an, not in any way like world-class team. And he was brought up basically into the world-class team that is G2 as this replacement for their old in-game leader. And since that's happened, you know, there was a lot of speculation. Is he going to be able to hit that level that's necessary? Is he going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best? And he's delivered on all fronts. So yeah. there you go, big round from him. Two kills that changed everything. Currently rocking a six kills, one assist, one death score line, which is very good news, obviously. And he's in line for a lot more here. They do not have any Kavlar vests on the terrorist side, which means this is going to be a really rough push. Although they have done a lot of damage there, and a quick trade is going to be so probably a little bit less than Body was hoping for, but um, they had him nicely isolated in the corner. Probably a bit disappointed that the uh, RPK, who's inside the bomb side there on his team, wasn't able to help him out. But um, I think you know, RPK even had, had flashbangs. He could have done a little bit more, I think. Yeah, he could have actually helped him get out of there in one piece. Shoxy's going to catch out Pyth, though. And that's going to slow things up here for NIP. NIP need to expect Shoxy to play mid like this. Shoxy, he loves to get up there close to the garage entrance and just basically sit there and listen because this is also a game where you can hear the footsteps of your opponents. That's why Get Right, he's walking right, right now with his knife out. That's slower, but it doesn't make any noise. If they run, you hear the footsteps. And so even if you're on the other side of the wall or anything like that, you'll hear the footsteps running by, and that's information you can play off of. So Shoxy, he loves to make those info plays. Get Right, though, misses. He hits the last one, but that was just a body shot. And so Shoxy survives, and it's still a man advantage here for G2. Oh, look at that. That's a headshot, though. And even with the Kevlar vest, that Deagle will kill you one shot, whatever the range is. Smith's here, going to try and see if he can maybe pick up Exist once they get into that bomb site and get the bomb down. Again, this is a one on three, so there's really no way Exist is going to win the round. But this, again, the $800 bonus, he's going to get it in the last possible second. So a lot has been accomplished here. Two kills and a bomb plant. That's a big success round here for NIP. And we have to reiterate once again, they're playing on the less favored side right now. So even if G2 are currently up 4-0 and in rounds, it's uh, too early to call. We should point out as well, just in case anyone um, is completely new to the game, has never watched it before, um, each half here is 15 rounds and you're playing for first to 16. They're going to trade places uh, after the first 15 rounds. So that's the number you need to be looking for there. You've got 26 rounds left. It even says it on the scoreboard. I know, there they've thought go. of everything, these devs, right? You know, they're just on top of their game, just like these players are as well. But it's going to be the full buy here for both teams. Everybody has their rifles, all of their grenades, and the Kevlar. And once again, it's going to be aggression coming out here from G2, or at least an aggressive stance in mid. They've got that triangle going, RPK, Shoxi, and Scream. All three there sitting in mid to try and basically cut the map in half. And so it's up to NIP to figure that out and see if they can take advantage of it. Yeah, this is a really big emphasis on the middle of the map, which is a risk. If, if NIP had gone for a rush to either A or B bombsite right now, maybe D2 would be in some trouble. But... Um, it's very common for the terrorist side to at one point or another try and see if they can challenge this mid control. And that's going to be real hard. Normally you're expecting at, I mean, one, maybe two, but most of the time it'll just be one person looking there. So three is a bit of a, a, bit of a stack going on there. And Scream starting off with a good kill there on Get Right. Freiburg kind of wants to follow it up, but that smoke is making it almost impossible. Yeah, I get right. I mean, that is one of their go-to plays on NIP. Just like Shoxy and Scream like to hang up here close to mid, close to the entrance of Garage, and Scream's gonna pick up another kill. There's the flash. Looking to the left, exists full flash, but he still gets the kill. At least now it's only the man advantage here for G2, but the flash is perfect and exists. Looking to pick up the second and nearly the third. RPK so lucky. He almost went down in a hail of bullets there. Oh, if they had known that he was gonna come around that corner, probably the spray would have continued and it would have worked out. Smiths is in a corner and they don't have to have any Molotovs or anything to get rid of him. So he's got a great angle right here. Couple of grenades raining in, but that M4 primed already and Pyth gonna be going down. Smiths finally drops, but a one on two here with 15 seconds left for us. He's got so much work to do right now. HE not gonna touch RPK, otherwise he'd be dead. 10 seconds and Forrest, he's dead already. Just doesn't know it yet. Double kill here for the French player, and that will make it 5-0 and oh right now. I mean, G2, they're losing a lot of money every single round, so the scoreboard is a little bit all over the place. But you can see these teams played in the group phase already, right? We're going into the bracket phase here. This is the bracket finals, but in the group phase, G2 beat NIP 2-0. And so right now, you know, that's also in NIP's head. The frustration, the longer it takes for them to get on the board to put a round up there, because right now G2 are up 5-0, the longer it takes. 
the more frustrated NRP are going to get, and then it really turns into that mental battle. They need to keep their focus. I think Shox may have been expecting an eco coming out of the NIP here because he's got that MP9 and he still wins the fight against the AK-47 of Exist. That's very unusual. Those submachine guns, like the MP9 that Shox is carrying, then they're just not worth that much against armor, but still makes it work. Grenade gonna be raining in. Shox, oh! He just made it out. That was so close. And he's actually traded it up. Body's got that MP9 now because he has a little bit more health to work with. Shoxy's going for that AWP, that's a sniper rifle, one shot, one kill, so we'll be seeing where he actually decides to post up with that gun. Still hanging around on that B site, and this is all coming down to the reach. Shoxy, he's the tactician on the team, he's trying to figure out what Nip are trying to do on the map at all times, and so if he feels like he needs to put three players over here on the B site, that's because he thinks NIP are going to come through. RPK there to trade, one for one with Get Right. And so they maintain, G2 have been so very good here. The first six rounds, they've been very good about maintaining that man advantage, keeping the pressure on NIP. Yeah, every kill that the ninjas get, immediately G2 are going to be able to refrag that one. So that's a big problem. Shocks here, covering the cross, smoke goes up, flashbang as well, and he can't get any kills. See him on the other side, completely smoked off. And again, he doesn't see the yellow outline that you guys at home are seeing. So it's very, very rough for him to try and get any kills through. Now the bomb is planted, and it's a four versus three. But even if they're a man up right now, G2, they're still in a bit of a tricky position. Freiburg is holding the vents right here. They got Forrest all the way outside of the bomb site trying to see if he can catch anyone rotating in. And now G2 feel like it's time for them to go. Pyth covering the high ground here. Gonna stand up, pick up a kill. Freiburg as well. Freiburg getting a double kill. And Forrest to close up the round at NIP. Taking their first round in this game. There oh, we go. At, buddy, this is mad. They're on the board. And yeah, average damage per round. That's what you're looking at. That's one of the more important stats that we have in the game. You can look at kills, but that one kill isn't going to tell you was, the, was his opponent on 20 HP or was he at full HP. Seeing how much damage you inflict in the round, though, that's important. And Body right now, he's doing a tremendous job. Only 19 years old as well. I mean, he's one of the younger talents in the scene. And he's really making an, making an impact with his start here on G2. Uh, G2 still in the lead, 5-1. to one, And these rounds have been so close up to now that G2, they're forced to eco. They're forced to save their money. And so that's why they're only on the pistols here. Oh, a run boost. Now, that's one of the more exotic tactical approaches uh, to this game. It's not so easy to execute, but if you do... Uh, run on top of another player, then you will get a little bit of a momentum boost and you can make some of these jumps that normally you can't make uh, on your own. So that's a little bit interesting. Uh, but you're ex exactly right. And the scoreboard again will tell you the story. It's the fact that, that they just don't have the money right now on the G2 team. Um, the most anybody has is uh, 3,800 on body and everything else below. And on the CT side, you want to be in the sort of plus 4,500 range before you start feeling good about making an actual rifle buy. Uh, Smith with the cheeky angle on the lamppost, not going to make it out alive. Freiburg's there for the punish and scream full flash. Still waiting for them to come around the corner. They're being very patient right now in IP. Freiburg takes one to the face, but still makes it out alive. And now it's a rotation coming in from Shox with the D. Point blank, spray and pray. Picks up one kill. They're all getting so low on it. IP side, though. RPK is the last man alive here. 1v3, and he'll get picked off. And so, NIP, it's a little bit too close for comfort with three guys dropping low, two of them very low. That, that should have been a bit of a smoother round considering they had the advantage in firepower, they had the grenades, and they got the drop on G2, basically. Yeah, I'm, I absolutely agree. A little bit terrifying for a moment. No, don't know if that's why Forrest was uh, having that expression in his eyes. Mm. Either way, we do see a sniper rifle being picked up as well on G2's side. Right now, body carrying it, which is a little bit interesting. Maybe he got the close spawn to be and just wanna, wants to be there really quickly, but kind of expect that maybe it would have been uh, Shocks or Smiths instead. 5-2 being the scoreline here. Freiburg almost getting a blind shot through the smoke, but G2 gonna go for the counter boost here with Scream on top. Yeah, this is one of their favorite stats to go for. G2, they're a very versatile defense te defensive team on this map on cash, and they'll just constantly be trying to change it up. They've favored three guys in mid so far, but going for the counter boost, that means putting Scream up on that box so they can look into T-spot onto the terrorist side of the map. That's also one of their favorite strategies, and so you can see why Exist is sitting all the way back here. He knows that G2 like to go for this play, and so he's going to sit way back and just hope for Scream to peek his head up there. Or they just go for the straight ball top and try and force him out, but he messed it up. And what is that? Scream! Scream with the double! They knew it was coming, Nip, and they still couldn't stop him. 
And you have to imagine nothing could feel worse than that. You read the play correctly. You even put in the Molotov to flush him out of that position. And then he comes out. It's like poking the beehive, isn't it? Scream just uh, on point once again. And now NIP trying to root out some of the most common positions here on the CT side. And behind those sandbags is definitely one of them. So that Molotov, if anyone had been there, they would have had a really rough time. But right now, G2 have no incentive to take any more fights. There's 30 seconds left and they know NIP have to get that bomb down. If the time runs out, the terrorist team will lose the round. So right now, G2 just holding steady. Get right, trying for a couple of shots. Smith's gonna get the kill before he goes down, and Forrest has picked up RPK here. Not a lot of health on Get Right. 12, in fact, and he's actually going for a fight. At least get the bomb down here. And he's feeling that pressure. He wants to make the change, and there we go. Forrest is gonna find the kill on Scream, so somehow Nip have clawed their way back into this round, but shocks the long con, and he misses the chance. Forrest hits the shot, and it's all on body now. Little does he know, they're both very low on HP. So it's a bit of a risk, him staying on the sniper rifle like this. He's gonna have that one shot, but he's looking to get close and he might be able to get the jump here. He spots out, get right, no scope, but Forrest is there. Instant trade frag, and this is what has to happen for NIP to have a chance in this map. They needed Forrest, the old legend, to come alive here. And that was a big round for Forrest, four kills for him. Yeah, That's why go. you have Forrest on the team, ladies and gentlemen. That's exactly what he's there for. Nine times out of ten, if you start a round like that, trading two for nothing, you are going to end up losing. And here's the horror for the French side. Now, they, again, do not have money to buy. They've upgraded some of their pistols, so we do have three Deagles in play right now. But apart from that, there's no Kevlar. There's not a single grenade in play right now on the CT side. There's a real good chance that NIP could come, uh, come in with a really strong comeback and uh, almost even up the scoreline here if they uh, play these next couple of rounds correctly. And as a result, and you can clearly see this on the minimap, NIP are holding really far back. They're being extremely defensive. They don't want to run into any weird tricks from G2. Yeah, and one of those tricks could be putting everybody onto one bomb site. With the big map here, you can see those red boxes on the top and bottom of the map. Those are the two bomb sites where you need to take the bomb and get the bomb plant down if you're on the terrorist side to win the round. And so there are different strategies for the CT side, for the, for the, for the counter-terrorists, right? They can decide to stack players on one site, and so they're taking a gamble. They're saying, well, Nipper are probably going to go B this round, right? And so they'll put four guys there with the pistols and cross, cross their fingers and hope or they can play a bit more default, and that's kind of what we're seeing from G2 right now. They're just spread out across the map, and they're treating this round like any other. They made their way into the vent right now. RPK is actually hiding in the smoke, so he can't really see a thing, but he's kind of counting on the idea that maybe no one can see him either. He's right at the edge. I kind of like this position. Let's see if he's going to be rewarded. He's got the P250, which is definitely also a very powerful pistol, but immediately shut down. Exist with the kill pipe, picking up shocks as well, and Scream and Smiths are left, and Right now, the best that they could probably do is just look for kills at the end of the round. Maybe try and see if they could steal a rifle or do a bit of damage to NIP's economy, which is starting to look better and better. I mean, 3,600 on Forest right now. It's a lot of money in his pockets, and he could buy rifles for his teammates, even if they can't afford it. Yeah, I think there was quite the hope here for G2 to actually pick up a couple of kills. When you're going for a hard eco, which is basically just sit on pistols, don't spend much more than that, you're looking to at least get two kills out of the round. One, two kills, you want to make Nip spend a little bit of their money going into the next round. You don't want to, to basically allow them to get that bank rolling, which means that then they can just buy with impunity and they don't have to worry about it so much in IP. So G2, not the best round so far for them. All five players alive for NIP, and I guess, you know, depends on how you look at it, right, Anders? I mean, it's just like, it's not a good round for G2, but this is an excellent anti-eco hold here from NIP, not drop yeah. man. No, they're playing very well, and this is their map pick. They did end up picking after the ban phase, and there's a tweet, and look at that, oh, this is yeah. great. He was watching this game in Sweden at four in the morning. Um, again, European time, just a little bit ahead of this point here from uh, where we are in Atlanta. I love it. And that's true, man. The sun comes up right now. Right now, we're getting close to that summer solstice, right? And it'll start coming up at like 2.30 in the morning, 2 o'clock, right? So it's like full daylight outside by that time. Yeah, it's a bit rough. It takes some getting used to. All day, people have been tweeting at us, you know, organizing viewing parties, getting together with their friends, family, parents. So big shout out to all of you guys who are, who are putting real work into watching these games because it's definitely going to be worth it. This is a bit of a titanic match, in fact, and almost tied up right now. 4-5, and Nip are going to be ecstatic about that. And here's a, something to look out for as so we're getting a bit of a fight. Get run actually going to fall back. But oh, mid-air, Freiber going to be catching body. But the big thing here for G2 is they do almost have no grenades. Right now they have a single flashbang, a little bit of a smoke, a little bit of a Molotov, and that's it. And they can't buy any time. Normally on the CT side, you want to use those grenades to run time off the clock for the terrorists. 
Now that was a miscommunication clearly from G2, and that's where the nerves might be starting to tell a little bit because RPK and Body, they were off about half a second, and Body peeked into the flash that RPK threw around that corner. That's not supposed to happen. That flash is supposed to go off, and then Body's supposed to peek behind it and catch anybody out on NIP's sign. So small mistakes that are being made here by G2 that are allowing NIP to find edges in the round. A little bit of an advantage here for NIP now. Clearly, obviously, they have the man advantage. But if they keep making mistakes like that, G2, life is only going to get easier here for NIP. You know whose life isn't going to be very easy right now? It's RPKs. Inside the bomb site alone and the rest of the team, they are miles away. So either he gets a lot of kills right now, or this round is not going to work out for G2. It's all on him as an individual. No backup's going to come. And that grenade and Molotov combination going to shut him down immediately. Scream, trying. And again, he can't see a thing through that smoke. He's just blind shooting and not connecting either. So four versus three. And because G2's economy is so bad right now, they've got to consider if they want to try and push this. If they can't get a kill immediately, they should save these rifles for the upcoming round. It's not worth it to throw all three away. There's one shot's going to be going down. Smiths and, yeah, Scream, they've got to be thinking about falling back. And that's what they'll do. NIP, I mean, a rough start for them. But now that they're in it, they're really in it. Yeah, nice defense there by Scream. Picks off Freiburg, who was looking to get the punish, looking to stop them from running away because there was a man holding in the checkered halls there in the room right next to CT. He could hear G2 backing off, and well, this is what Scream is capable of. I would say that these are low impact frags. They're not really going to make a huge difference, but still, he's staying alive, he's holding onto the gun, and he's watching Smith's back. And Smith's right now, dude, you should not be peeking into T spawn. Just sit and wait, yeah. If you're going to save your guns, this is a mistake that we see teams make sometimes where it's like they save their guns. The whole point of you backing off and saving the gun is to survive to the next round. Don't go looking for fights after you've decided to save. Then you're just you're defeating the purpose. Yeah, and if you are wondering why NIP feel confident in taking these fights, if we look at the scoreboard, I mean, it's almost $10,000 on Forest. It's almost 6500 on Pipe. They have money to throw away to, to try and run these guns down, whereas G2 most certainly don't. They have forced up in this round. And it's not the worst buy in the world. They've definitely managed it. Two Famasas there. Um, still workable rifles. And get right charging into the middle. Not even going to get through the smoke before he's gone. And look at Exist. He should have been there with him up on, the, up on the boost. But he's a little bit too slow. And that might cost him in the end. Yeah, Scream is always going to be putting shots through. These are, these are where you start to, t to get the tells from the teams. These teams know each other so well. And so if you start to, you know, if you start to develop a habit, you keep going for the same strategy round after round, the, the, the CT side or the T side, both are going to start picking up on that. And that was a classic case of Scream just saying, okay, I know that you like to flash your way through into mid-get, right? I'm just going to randomly spray in there. And if you run in, maybe I get lucky and get a headshot, which is what happened. So nice little punish there. Nice little adjustment made by G2 to get an edge in the round. NIP, they do have that mid control though, or at least they're working on it. Exist, he's posted up here, but he's alone. He doesn't have any backup, so it's a little bit risky for him right now. Forrest finally gonna get into the fight with him though. Is this is a very interesting, it's actually a bit of an unusual setup for G2. They're kind of leaving the middle of the map open for NIP to actually almost sneak into CT spawn. But then they would have Scream there to keep an eye on it. Now they've been spotted coming up the highway in towards the A bomb site and See if G2 can manage it. They must win this round. They're getting really far behind in this game at the moment. Exist turning around, but he's going to get shot in the back by Forrest. Oh, sorry, by Shox. And Scream picking up a second kill. There's Pi finally coming in and making it a double. Leaving us in a two on two. And the bomb not planted yet, but they have 25 seconds. And missing that kill. Bit of a shame. Oh, so fast, Pi. He's going to get that smoke down, though. Create that temporary wall and make life a little bit more difficult here for G2 trying to get onto this bomb site. And so you can see the nades going out. There's some info. Freiburg now knows where one of these players is coming from. He's going to be the point man here. He's the first line of contact. And Pyth, he's so low that he just wants to play the angles. Body's going to catch Pyth, though. Pyth must have went for the peak. But that, ba that baits it out for Freiburg. And Freiburg could get the second kill here as well. Does lock it down. He gets the clutch. Saves the AWP. And we are in the lead here. NIP, six rounds to five. And listen to the crowd. I mean... It's 4 a.m. in Sweden, but they certainly have some support here in Atlanta, the Turner Studio. And that shot from Freiburg, right? The mid-air, just picking him out of the sky with a headshot as well. It can be difficult enough to hit people when they're jumping across like that, but a headshot definitely making it a little bit more stylish. Now, we're going to go into the 12th round here, and now NIP have the round lead. This is great for the Swedish team right now. Get right, going to be charging in, and this time he even wins the fight. Taking out Shot Scream, going to be kick, picking up one kill, but goes down to Forrest right afterwards, and there's a double for Forrest. G2, now they seem truly lost. I don't think they have any clue what they're doing anymore on the CT side. They're trying to force the issue. 
Instead of falling back to the basics, trying to go something, I mean, go with something that's worked in the past, they were trying to set up that, that triple play basically in mid once again. And this time around, NIP, they were prepared for it. The first part of it just getting shut down completely. That was Shoxy holding up close. And then NIP have shown us they're willing to get that Molotov behind the sandbag. So Scream was toast, literally. And then it just kind of falls apart from there, right? Then G2, it's an act of desperation to try and run in there and just take the fight, hoping to turn the tide. I Not like going to happen in this case. I like this move from uh, Smith. She's actually in a main, which again is a very aggressive position if you're on the CT side. He sort of left the bomb side, trying to push up and get information. Now, tragically for him, he goes down to Forrest, who was waiting and anticipating that one. But if you are in a two versus four like they just were, you have to take some risks. If you just play it standard and just wait in either bomb site, that's almost always going to be a recipe for failure. So if Smith, if they hadn't been looking, he could have walked up behind them. He could have got a couple of kills, maybe brought his team back in the game. And I still appreciate the effort. But we are going to be at 7-5 right now. Semler, uh, what's your opinion here? Should, uh, should they be going for a tactical timeout right now on the D2 team? And they do have the option. They have one timeout per map, and you can use that on either half, and it lasts two minutes. So there is a strategy involved there for when you want to use your timeout. If you're feeling like things are getting out of hand, you're losing control of the situation, you can decide to save it then, or to use it then, or you can save it for later on in the second half, right? So seeing as how you only get the one, it's going to be up to, um, to Shoxy, basically, to decide when he wants to call it. I don't think that things are out of control just yet here for G2, though. I mean, NIP have picked up six rounds, seven rounds in a row. Yeah. But with the round of Eco, and G2 can get right back into this. So there's still a couple rounds left. They just need to lock down and focus with a half buy here. Get those pistols back in play. I mean, essentially what G2 has shown us in the last seven rounds is that they don't know how to win rifle rounds against Nip on this map on CT side. So, I mean, there, there are a lot of options that you can try for. And they've gone for the counter boost in the middle. That worked great earlier, but since then, it's been, it's been a little bit lackluster on the creative side. And this time, trying into A main again. Forrest could have been caught off then. At least they uh, push him a little bit back, and the rest of NIP waiting somewhere in the middle or towards the B bomb side. Just uh, taking a moment to breathe. Well, I like it. I like to see some variety here in the game. They've already, they've already shown that they're willing to push, push Squeak Door over on A site. Now they go for A main. They just wanted to try and run in there, take a fight with NIP, catch them off guard. Because they've shown a lot of aggression over here where Scream is currently looking in the B halls. And so right now they're just like, okay, well, we've taught NIP that we can think about the B halls, that we like to go aggressive there, we like to go aggressive mid. We haven't really gone aggressive A yet, so let's do that this round, right, and see if we can't surprise them. It doesn't work out. NIP were ready. They played it very passively, very safe, and now they're going to go for that B split, it looks like, because, well, for now, they have the smokes down cutting off mid. That's where Freiburg is playing from. If he jumps up on this box, though, he might actually expose himself to the position that uh, RPK and Shocks are holding over there. The smokes are going to vanish, and... Freiburg so ready for it, and in turn, he takes both of them out. He was well prepared for that one. It's a bit scary, because it's a good angle to get a headshot. Smith's trying to take a slow and steady fight. Don't want to spam too much with those pistols. Not going to be able to make that work either, and scream and body on left, and I'm not seeing it for G2 right now. They need someone to step up and get some big kills in the beginning of these rounds, and not at the end. And scream, it's a good headshot with a deagle to at least inflict a little bit of damage to NIP. Right now, he's looking for the lurker. He's looking for somebody to be out on the extremities here for NIP. That's why he's running into mid. He wants to try and change things up and see if he can't catch somebody off guard. Not going to happen this time, though. All four members for NIP make their way onto the site, and they're, set, they're setting themselves up to be able to watch each other's backs. That's the whole point here for NIP. You want to get onto the bomb site with the terror, you know, as a terrorist, right? You want to get onto the bomb site, get that bomb planted, but then immediately your next priority is, okay, well, we don't obviously want to go up with the bomb, so how do we get out, right? And so that's what Freiburg is doing. He's found a way out for his team where nobody's waiting for him, so they should be in a position to save their guns here on IP. Freiburg even got a catch screen. That's like a party favor, you know? It's like, great. Feel good moment. Just having a good time, which uh, Freiburg generally is. Apart from being shot this round by Body, he's at 13 kills. Forrest at 16, so Freiburg playing very well at the moment. Good shot from Body. Going to be taking out Forrest and trying to hold on to this AK. But just a second before the round changes into the 14th, he's going to end up losing that rifle. Now, G2, if they want any chance, they need these last two rounds. And I just want to remind you guys, that is how fast these guys are. They don't get the x-ray where they get to see people through walls and through smokes. They literally react in split-second timing, basically, but when they see somebody, and boom, they're hitting mouse when they're pulling the trigger. They are so fast, these players, and that's years of muscle memory and just, you know, reaction speed, of, you know, godlike reaction speeds. That's what it's all about. They don't get to cheat like we do and see it coming.
Oh, look at this aggressive move coming out right now. G2 trying to push up outside of B. This is what we were asking for, but they're running into a lot of opposition. RPK in the corner, can't pick up the kill, and Body, he's been smoked out. He couldn't even help out his teammate right now. He's inside the bomb site with a rifle, but look at this. They're actually boosting into the vent. Get right now, being boosted from what's normally the counter-terrorist route, and now he's got a little bit of mid-control here, so NIP re being really tricky with the mind games. This is when you start to see artists at work. They're just flowing NIP. They go off of one play to the next, and they just are not allowing G2 to find anything that works. It's a thing of beauty to watch. This is why NIP are one of the best teams in the world right now. There's the peak, though, and Smith, he has the angle, despite somebody trying to bait for Forrest by jumping across. Smith reacts in time to picks off Forrest, and now it's only the man advantage here for NIP, but he's still alone on this A site. So he needs that backup. Bonnie. He's waiting on the call, but it's a bit of a... I mean, they're so spread out right now, G2, across the map, but finally, Body's gonna head over here to help on A, and NIP, they're fixing to go. They got both sniper rifles here. The problem is, if you start missing shots at this close range, you're not gonna get a chance to shoot again, Smith. There's one, they're getting closer, and he misses the second, and that'll be it. Body gonna get taken out as well. That was Freiburg jumping up on that red container and able to drop him. Another bomb plant, another round being won here from NIP. That's gonna be nine in a row. This is extremely rare. Again, um, if you're a regular viewer, you'll know this is not something we see every day, but um, usually there's sort of a mix of a round. You'll win a streak of three, then you'll lose a couple, then you get back into it. Winning nine rounds in a row, especially as considering how well G2 have been playing here at the second week of E-League, this is quite amazing for the Swedish Ninjas. Now it's definitely an impressive feat here by NIP. They're doing a lot of work. It's like I said, man, it just seems to me now that they can do no wrong. You know, you get into that mind zone, that, that hive mind where you just play off of each other, get right, getting boosted back into mid, not wasting any time. There wasn't like, oh, maybe we should do this. It was just like, boost me into mid right now. And they're just flowing from one step to the next NIP. And this is really a nightmare for G2. When you're on the defense and you're up against an offense that's just moving all over the place, that's one step ahead, how do you get back into the game? But it's the last round of the first half here, the 15th round, 9-5, to five, nip in the lead. And well, G2, they're going for that buy. And they're just barely squeaking one out here. Now, there is one thing that stands out to any regular Counter-Strike viewers, and that's that auto-sniper right now on Get Right. Look at him, really far back, posted up, looking towards the B-bomb sign. He wants someone from G2 to be a little bit aggressive like they were trying last round. And if they were, they'd end up getting punished real hard. Their shot's going down. Smith with a good refrag, but Pike opening that squeaky door. And he's not trying to sell anything like Girl Scout cookies or anything like that. It's just bullets in that AK. And we've got four versus three. Scream, RPK, and Body left to try and see if they could salvage this last round and at least make it 6-5, or sorry, yeah, 6-9 here for the first half. Uh, Scream is so frustrated right now as well. A little late to the party, getting over towards that A site. He was hoping to bring it back and try and even things up here at a 3-3, but for now, Scream thinking about rotating over towards that B site, and that's just due to Get Right making some noise over here. You can see RPK, Scream, and Body, all three of them now on the B site. They've been sold. Get Right just completely faked out G2, and Nip, they have a great opportunity now to just run onto that A site when nobody is there. This is a nightmare for G2. They are so caught out in the wind. Yeah, and what can you say about this other than the fact that they are being read extremely well? NIP really good, doing a great job here on Cash Scream. Trying some random shots coming through, but they know what a deep hole they're in at the moment. Playing at the edge of the smoke here, the bomb is about to go down, and there's a good shot from Pike, picking up one and a second. Third kill overall of the round for him, and Body all alone here. One on four, the bomb being down. Clutches like this almost never happen. And NIP, they're not even giving him any openings right now. There's a bit of a peak. They know where he's coming from. It looks like they're all going to fight him at the same time. That'll be the first half done. 10-5 in favor of Swedish NIP. Yeah, standing ovation is right here for NIP. I don't think anybody expected this much of a performance from them coming into this first half. G2, like you said, they, they just dominated their group. They didn't drop a single map going through. They haven't dropped a single map so far this week. Yeah. So they're right on the edge now. NIP have a huge lead. Absolutely impressive. When we come back for the second half, we're going to see if they can make it back. But in the meantime, we do have a bit of introduction at Counter-Strike 101 about the economy of the game. Economy 101. In Counter-Strike, you earn money by eliminating players, winning rounds, defusing, and planting bombs. Between rounds, players have the opportunity to spend and better their equipment. Players can purchase body armor and utility. Teams start the game with only $800. This is the pistol round. Grab your gear and let's go. 
In a save round, team members will avoid spending money to save for future rounds. In a force buy, players will purchase what they can in hopes of something happening. The economic goal is to earn enough money for a full buy to have the weapons and utility to take out your opponents. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed members of the audience. We are ready with this upcoming second half between NIP and G2 on cash. And honestly, NIP, they sort of stole the show in that first half, Samla. I love it, man. I love it. We're getting a legendary matchup between these two god-tier teams, and it's a full house. Yeah. And you've got so many fans here that are just... I mean, it's late at night here, too, in Atlanta, man. We're getting on towards yeah. like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Doesn't matter, these guys. They are here to watch some excellent CS. And you guys saw that uh, economy video, so we do have a bit of a summary of that as well, in case you guys were wondering if you're new to the game. So a little bit of, uh, you know, just a little bit of a graphical layout, exactly what you can expect. Yeah, you got your pistols. These are what they're trying to save money with. They're cheap. You get them. You're saving money for the next round. The submachine guns and the shotguns are what make you money. You get bonus money for kills with those. And eventually, you want to get up to the rifles. Those are the heavy-hitting guns. When we're talking about full buys, we're talking about them going for the rifle buys, where they do the most damage. But now, well... We get into the second half. Pistol round here. Everybody on pistols and NIP are in the lead. Ten rounds to five. G2, though, they're set up perfectly here. Yeah, on a map like Cash, it can be very hard to play the CT side pistol round because these Glocks have 20 bullets in them. They shoot real fast, so when you get close, they're just going to run you down. NIP need to do well, and headshots on the way forward, and there's Existence. Get right, picking up a kill as well. And that's two for none favoring the Swedes without anything having been returned. The only 
silver lining right now for G2 is the fact they have that bomb plant. And now NIP, they're going to run in for the retake here. And it looks like it's going to be a quick one, too. They're all grouped up on side. Smith trying to see if he could maybe get a kill here to stop it. And there's one. Oh, Smith coming in with a double kill and turning around. Shocks also picking up one. They're running in. Pipe picking up one. And Forrest with the final shot. And that's going to be NIP stealing away the pistol round. Great try here for G2. You've got to give it to Smith. Those were some great kills coming in, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, that's the issue. This is why NIP were set up towards mid, towards B. You guys saw what happened to G2 on their T side. They're trying to retake on that B site. It's so difficult to CT because you're running into all these choke points. What you can do on the CT side, though, is you can set up so that you can then retake on the A site, which is a much easier site. A lot of open space. You can just run up there and try and take the fight with the terrorists, which is what happened. Smiths and Shocks, they tried to do the best they could. They tried to play the angles, but there were just too many CTs left alive on NIP's side. They just got overrun. And so now, well, at least they get the bomb plant. You're right. That's the silver lining. So they get that bonus money. We should be seeing the rifles come up for them in the next round. But NIP, they aren't messing around. Straight up the three rifles for them and two SMGs. Shoxy has a deagle, and it's been known in the past, whenever he gets this uh, in his hands, really bad things can happen to his opponents. And they know it as well. You can see in the middle, Pyth a little bit weary. Again, this is a one-shot headshot, even if you have armor. And they could hear the terrifying sound of that coming out. They make doubly sure that he's dead. Suddenly they got the headshot with the M4 and the a grenade follow-up. And now it's just going to be a complete mow down here. This MP9 will chew up anything that doesn't have Kevlar vest on it. And that's going to be a triple kill for Get Right, making it 12-3. And NIP, again, just to remind you, we're playing first to 16 rounds. NIP, they're four away right now. They're doing a fantastic job. Yeah, they could have just, I mean, the only way to get more thorough there was to just, you know, cremate the guy, right? Throw a Molotov in there just to be thorough, right? What is he, a vampire at this point? Separate the body from the head. I mean... Just got to make damn sure that he's not going to come back at least. Um, we do have AKs and a lot of grenades here on the G2 side. So this is not quite the last stand for G2, but we're getting real close to that point in the game where if they don't start making a comeback, then they're not going to have the money and the rifles to even make one. But they did try. They did try, G2, actually, to go pull a fast one here. You can see Smith, he's made his way across the A main entrance already. Once that smoke goes down, if that smoke wasn't going to be there, they were definitely looking to try and find a pick early on, take some early aggression there towards NIP on that A site. But for now, G2, they're content to sit and wait. There's the flash, the peak, and the follow-up exists. Catches Smith's blind, but Scream is there to return the frag instantly. And that's the kind of teamwork we need to see here from G2. Only problem is Scream, once again, toasted. There you go. Oh, what? Shots coming through. That's a kill on Pyfe, but the follow-up secondary kill there and get right. You can tell that is not easy. You have to react within a fraction of a second to be able to get that kind of a kill. And body with a good headshot there on Freiburg. Maybe G2 are going to come alive a little bit here. Right at the end. It's a one on two and Forrest trying to see if he can make his way in. Going to be going down to RPK. And that's six rounds for G2. G2 showing that they have some fights left in them here. They haven't caved. They aren't rolling over. Shoxy, this is what he's capable of. That is so fast. And yeah, Gerrit's just like, what was that? <laughs> How did he get me? He thought 100% he had Shox dead to rights there. But this is what a star player is capable of, a god-tier player. Shoxy's one of the best players ever. And yes. he's just so fast, so precise. Boom. Sixth round on the board here for G2. 12 on the board for NIP. And well, NIP, they go for the force buy. Bit of a mix here. Three rifles, an SMG, a pistol, and exist. Not the best buy by any stretch, considering G2 have all of their rifles and a good nade count. Yeah, I, I actually question this a little bit. Because um, they have such a big round lead, they could afford to throw a one round and then go for a really good buy. Uh, if it's neck and neck, maybe you want to try and keep pushing and you feel like you're, you're under a lot of pressure right now. But NIP can't be feeling that much pressure. And look at the... Look at the split here. They're leaving Freiburg alone with an MP7 and B. That's not a lot of defense, but if they come A, then NIP might get the round. This might be the gamble. They're saying, all right, we'll force up, and if it's A, we win the round. If not, then we'll have something for the next round anyway. So sort of a, an interesting approach here, and one that we don't see too often. 
And this isn't going to help things. This is very interesting. Well, I mean, NIP, that's the perfect time. About that minute mark is when you usually see the CT side start to make plays for information, and that was one of them. They flash their way into A main and IP. They put two guys in there, don't see anybody, and so they start to rotate defense over towards that B site because that's where they think G2 are going. They didn't see anybody over here on A. Their, their linchpin is going to be Forrest, who's boosted up. They've just left him to the wolves. And the problem with this is that Shocks heard them running away. He's literally right behind Forrest. He's behind the squeak door. He heard that rotation of the two people running out of the bomb sign. So just the audio information right now might actually lose uh, an IP this round. Forrest with a really good job picking up one and a second. How does it happen? He should have got maybe one, but certainly not both of those kills. G2, they're going to be in the side and body in the middle here, taking a fight and losing it. And that was probably the crucial part of the round here. That's what settles it. Get right, going to pick up a kill and now scream all on his own, and he is the headshot machine, but he's gonna get killed by Freiburg. Another round for NIP. Showing some frustration here. And yeah, Forrest with the nerves as well. That was a sloppy spray. This second shot onto Shoxi, though, is nuts. And if he could have made it out of there in one piece, who knows what would have happened there for NIP. They would have still had a fighting chance. Well, I mean, for 4G2, but it would have been even more decisive. The only issue there is just that Forrest kind of fluffed the spray a little bit, took a little bit too long. But this is a real problem now for G2. NIP up to 13 rounds. It's the first team that gets to 16 rounds. And so G2, they were starting to feel good about themselves. They're like, great, we've got rifles. Now's our chance to reset them, and we can start the ball rolling for ourselves. No, NIP, they come right back into it, and G2 going for the force buy. Yeah, and they have three Molotovs. That's a strong indication that we could be seeing a, a B attack. That's very common that you can sort of firebomb on, firebomb almost the entire B bomb site from outside of the site. So you're actually not even in it by the time the grenade, the grenades land. There's one coming in, a little bit of a follow-up. Forrest is in the corner and he can't see anyone through the smoke. Great pop flash and oh, wow. Body pre-firing as he's running into the bomb side, just shooting into the corner, hoping that someone's gonna be there. The bomb though is dropped out in the open and there's just tech nines left right now. NIP, they're controlling the situation. They've got it settled and it's gonna be shot all on his own in a one on four. And look how hungry they are. Yeah, that's where it's starting to get a little out of control now, NIP. They make some, they, I mean, they go for some questionable challenges there, on, in all honesty. They really shouldn't be going so aggressive trying to take the fight to G2, because even with the pistols, even pistols, a headshot will end you, right? Look at that threat in the background that we see. He's the coach of the team, yeah. um, former teammate of Get Right and, and uh, Forrest, so has a lot of experience playing They've with known them each other now. For 10 he's, years. Yeah, now he's coaching them and also um, the in game leader. So doing uh, just a lot, of, uh, a lot of calls here for the NIP team. 14 to 6 is the current scoreline. And moving into the 21st rounds, I mean, right now, G2, they've got next to nothing. Uh, they really don't have much to work with here, unfortunately, for them. It's just going to keep being a force buy scenario because they know they've got their backs to the wall here. NIP only need two rounds to pick up this first map in the best of three. And once again, NIP, they really are favoring that sort of retake scenario. Get right and exist working together on short, but a bit of an off angle. And that smoke is going to go down, but get right, he was on high. He will be able to look over it, and body will find a kill on pipe. So you can instantly see get right start to worry about that mid push coming in. He does not want to get flanked. This is a very successful start to the round here for G2. They're getting way more than they should right now. The bomb has been planted. The big problem is it's planted in behind the container. So the people playing in main right now, that's body and scream, they won't be able to help out if the defuse comes in. Great shot from Smith though. He's gonna go down and what scream? That's a blind shot through just guessing the angle and getting a kill and that's it. NIP gonna fall back. And this was a quality of all French teams, almost, it feels like. You know, even with pistols, even when they should be dead, they still fight back and they still manage to find round wins. And this is all because NIP right now are not feeling it. 2v4 retake on that A site. They want to hold on to their guns and save it for the next round because, really, when G2 are hitting shots through smoke, NIP right now are feeling like, well, what can we do? You see it from Scream's perspective. He's blind. He does not see the X-ray. He doesn't see their outline. So he's just hoping to get lucky, and it works. Uh, very well done, and the fact is they need they need this version of Scream. They need the screen that we saw yesterday that was uh, completely incredible. It's not that he's doing so badly. He's top fragging at 16 kills, um, and Body doing fairly well, but um, NIP, they've just had such a terrific first half. It's hard for G2 to catch up right now. 22 kills on Forest as well. It's yeah. just a little bit frightening, a little bit worrying. That's, that's when it gets nuts, right? Because that's a win condition for NIP. And they can count on Forrest and get right to deliver frags to, give, to get those kills every round. That's when Nip win series. That's when Nip get titles. So we have to see if G2 are going to show that mental fortitude to come back in this game. They still have a shot at it. NIP are not up on map point just yet. 
So if they play flawlessly, they could, they're perfectly capable of doing to NIP what NIP did to them in the first half, getting that flawless half here. That's what they're going to need to right now. Screen being boosted. He did this on the CT side as well. He spots out one person looking for that tap. He did hit Pyth, but it was through the top of the box, and it doesn't do nearly enough damage. Some of the damage falls off when you're shooting through objects, and um, that's going to make it a four versus five right now. G2, they, kinda, they can't afford any mistakes. They need to play flawlessly at this point. Well, no, NIP, they're just gambling. They're putting those three players over on the B site right now. They do not want to, to give it a chance to G2 to get onto this site easily because it's the harder site to retake if you're on the CT side. And G2 right now, they're putting two players over here thinking that this could actually be the play that they might have three players over on A for NIP. Instead, it's going to be Body. Not sure if he spotted the rifle, but he is going to get that Molotov in there. Freiburg come out the play. And he's dead. Smith finds Get Right as well. Things are shaping up nicely here for G2. They're going to be feeling good about pressing onto the B site now, but there are still two players here, and one of them is Forrest, and he's already hitting shots. Oh, Pyth waiting a bit. He's going to pick up the one that could have very nearly been a shot. If Exist had an HE grenade right now, he could destroy Body immediately, flashes his way through, just charges down. Not going to be a kill. Exist goes down to Smith's. It looked like if he could have rounded that corner, he would have got the kill on Body instead. And that's going to be 14 to 8. That's good news and big news here for G2. But the really important thing is the fact that NIP are out of money. They're back to just pistols. Forrest upgrading one of them from the standard USPS, but they really don't have a lot else. And I still, as I always say, wish they would buy a single flashbang. HE buying a grit, uh, an HE, just to troll maybe. Yeah, I get right. He's just like, all right. You know what, if I can get a nice money nade in there, if they stack up for me, maybe we can do some damage. How about a stack in mid? Does that work? No. Body, shocks, and Scream shutting him down, and it's just Freiburg left alive, but not for long. Scream will get another headshot. And that is a perfect anti-eco round there for G2. Just keeping their cool, staying grouped up together, making use of those rifles. That was a Smiths bit of a... There on your screen. That was a bit of a power play, wasn't it? You know, even if they are just uh, on pistols and no armor, that's still pretty bold to just be charging in like that. And I'm here, wonder if they registered how much confidence was on G2 in that round. It's such a big resource in Counter-Strike to, to be able to take fights, even if uh, maybe you're a bit worried there. G2 setting up outside of B, but the bomb, if you look at the minimap there on the top left, it's all the way over at the A side of the map, and that's a big indication that right now G2 are not going to go for any kind of weird attack in here to B. They're just uh, trying to put a little bit of pressure on Nip. Exactly, misdirection. And that's one of the, the steps that you'll see. It's about getting map control, which then gives you more room to move on the, uh, on the map itself for G2, and they really just want to try and force NIP to rotate around. They get right, two kills. Big ones. The ball makes its way out onto the site. Get right, still fighting. Puts the flash out there, but it's not going to work. And we're into a three on three scenario now. But G2, that bomb, it's been delivered to the site. So they should be able to get the plant here, unless Exist has something to say about it. But he gets flashed, and he needs to back off. He does spot another member running onto the bomb site. There's Forrest hitting a shot right now. Two versus three. Long range spray. Gonna come through, and it's all on body. He's got the double looking for the quad, and it's gonna get stolen from him. Freiburg picking up that shot. That is 15 to 9 now, favoring NIP, and that means they are at map point. One more round, and they're going to take the first map. It's a best of three, so it's still way too early to call. But I mean, I would say right now NIP have been looking real good on cash. Oh, they're looking so solid, but this is why teams ban cash against NIP. It's one of their best maps, if not their best map in the pool right now. And so, you know, G2, they, they, they're good on cash too, but it is a bit of a gamble letting NIP get onto it. And that's why you saw um, Mo and Moses being a bit surprised on the panel there. They were a little bit shocked that uh, they actually let this map through, and um, maybe rightly so. You certainly see the results of it right here. It is a sniper AWP on Smiths here. See if maybe he could open up around body. Just going to be charging through. Is there any kind of backup, any kind of boost? No, he's just single-handedly on a mission right now, eating a grenade and then a headshot. And Smith does get the refrag on Exist, so still a 4-on-4, four four, but that's a bit dangerous. And look at Get Right. Yeah, Get Right right now, he wants to get that trade frag. And this is, this is an uncanny ability that Get Right has, his ability to just infiltrate and get behind enemy lines. Easy kill for him on a Smith, gets the long range spray on Scream. And it's all on Shoxy and RPK now to try and find that bomb, but not for long. Pyth is there to shut down RPK, and it's going to be the man himself, the legend, Shoxy in a 1v3 scenario now. He has a minute 10 on the clock to make a play happen. And but NIP right now, they're just buddying up. Yeah, the big thing is that he doesn't have the bomb and now he's down to 40 health as well. This is just way too much for him to handle. 
They should not be able to lose this round. Shock's gonna go and pick up the bomb, or at least try to here with about 50 seconds on the clock. He needs just a lot of kills and a bomb plant in this round to really make it work. There's the pop flash coming through. Gonna peek into main, and Getright just keeps falling back. He's boxed in now, though. Pyth has worked his way through Squeak Door, so he's in the back line. There's no way for Shoxy to back off of this position without Pyth being there and ready and waiting, as you guys can see on the map. Freiburg and Getright now holding on the site. And this is it, Shox. He's gonna have to find that first headshot on Get Right. And there you go. Steps out into the open and he delivers. Does he spot Freiburg? No, it doesn't happen. Freiburg gets the drop on him, and it will be a 16-9 scoreline at the end of the first map. NIP with the big win here versus the French team. Yeah, they were not looking this good earlier in the week, but come Friday here on TBS, and they show up and they're ready. What an amazing performance here from the Swedes. It was their map pick, and uh, obviously G2's map is going to be coming up, so we don't want to draw any conclusions just yet, but a very powerful performance here from the Swedish team. When we come back after the break, we're going to have a bit of a tactical analysis of what we just saw.